Hey there! In this video, you're going to learn how to implement rarity-based random systems, like in Dungeons and & Dragons and in many other games. It is universal and can be used for item drop rarity, generating random events, states, etc. It's Iles and without further ado, let's start! Here we are in Godot. First of all, let's create a new node, we call it scene and save it. And right away, before we start, I need you to describe the algorithm. There will be an array that contains items. The item has next values. Value, specifically what it represents, like a certain item or a number or whatever. Pick chance and a boolean variable that defines if this item can be picked. What I just described we will make up our random item custom resource. And the random picker itself will work in a couple of stages. First, it calculates the overall pick chance. Then it generates a random number. Then it finds the item in which drop range this random number lies. And then it returns the value of this item. As I said, we will make a custom resource for our CNETIG new script. And here set a new script, name it random item and make it inherit not the node type but the resource type, ok? Right away, in order to make instances of this resource, we need to make it as a resource, as a class. You write class name and the name of the class. Let's try to make a random item resource. New resource and as you can see, it pops up in the search. Now we need the three variables, the value, the pick chance and the can be picked variable. The pick chance is an integer variable, can be picked is a boolean variable and the value, it doesn't really matter what type the value is, it can be a string, it can be an integer, it can be some packed scene or some other resource, it doesn't really matter as long as it's an item. Let's create one instance of it, let's create a new folder, items new resource, a random item, item common, open it, in the value let's write common and set the pick chance to 10 for instance, that's our item, that's our resource already. By the way, you might ask what the difference between nodes and resources, essentially nodes proceed actions and resources they contain the data and they can describe certain algorithms, but they do not proceed any actions themselves. Now we need to create a random picker system, and that will be a node. Go to File, New Script, let's name it Random Picker, and this one will inherit from node. Set it as a class of name Random Picker. It will contain a list, here it is. In order to convenient to set the items for this array, we can specify the type that is contained in this array. However, as you see, we get the error, the export hint isn't a resource type. What does it mean? We have defined it as a resource, right? The problem is, Godot 3.3 and older does not support exporting custom resources. For now, we cannot do that. You can basically Instead of random item, you can write resource type. It doesn't really change much because the random item is a child of resource. Now we can directly work with our picking. Set up a function called pick random item. In the beginning, it defines chosen value variable, and in the end, it returns this chosen value. I have already written us a hint what we are going to do. So, first of all, we need to check if the items list is not empty. Good. In case if the item list is not empty, we will try to find a random item. But if it's not, we will immediately return the chosen value that's currently now. Okay, calculate the overall chance. We need to go through the array and sum all of the item's peak chances. Good. Now let's generate a random number. The reason why I needed this overall chance to be calculated was because I need to create a random number in range from 0 to this overall chance minus 1. And now we'll pick a random item. Right away, create a variable called offset. You understand what it means in a second. So, again, we go through our item list, we check if the item can be picked, and we see if our random number corresponds to the item's pick chance. 
and if it is, then our chosen value is the value of this item from the list, because remember, it's not the value itself, it's the resource that contains the possibility, the probability, and the item value itself. So, we set the chosen value to this value, <laughs> and we break the for loop, and then we get to this line and we return this chosen value. However, what happens if the random number does not correspond to item's peak chance? Well, you probably will encounter bugs. Here is where our offset variable is needed. If the random number does not correspond to the item's peak chance, then increase the offset by this item's peak chance and on the next iteration, check if this number is in range from the item peak chance plus the offset. So there were two ways of how I could handle this problem. I could decrease the random number every time when it does not correspond to the item, or I could do what I did. I chose the first way because you generate a random number, and when you change it, it's not more random, right? <laughs> Basically, that's it. Now we are gonna do a couple of tests for our project. Let's duplicate our item. Let's make an uncommon and a rare item. Set the uncommon peak chance to, let's say, 5 and save it. And the item rare will be 1. Before we start testing it, we can enhance the system. We can make this random picker work both as a child in a scene and as an in-code created variable. So the pick random item method will receive an items array variable that will by default equal to items list if we do not pass anything. Now instead of in the method, instead of item list, write this new variable items array. Okay good. Let's first try it using as a child in the scene. Add a child node to our scene, and here is our random picker, because as you remember, we set it up as a class. Now, in the random picker, set the items list size to 3, and pass the items in the array. Save it, and in the scene, set up the items array, we're not gonna use it right now, but you'll see. Make a reference to our random picker, because it's a child, and then here, it's just a way how we can test it. I have set up different peak chances, but I did not rename them. So, uncommon item must be uncommon, and the rare must be rare. Now let's check it again, and as you see, it's working. So we have a lot of common ones, a couple of uncommons, and rarely we have the rare one. And at last, let's just check this can be picked variable. If we said that can be picked false for our common item, we will never see it again. Great. And now, the very last bit, I told you that we can use it in code. So, for our scene, we already have this array. Let's make it here instead. Again, set this array. Here we can delete our random picker. We can delete the reference. And here, instantiate a random picker. And when you call the pick random item method, pass this array of our scene. Now, it's working as well. Absolutely fine. So, that was it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it was useful and you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ives and until next time. By the way, I also have a Twitter account, so make sure to drop me a follow to see the new releases and the latest news of this channel.